Thanks for joining this preview of Strategy Mastermind Symposiums. I'm Lynn Hunsaker from Clear Action Continuum. Each session begins with a highlights round robin, and I'll share provocative and inspirational ideas and techniques that you can apply to a strategic action template and share lessons learned. We'll do this for a total of three mini topics for your takeaway action plan. Here are five types of mastermind symposiums that you can benefit from. All of these are flexible, so your votes and suggestions are welcome. These three stakeholder groups, customers, employees, and partners, they're all seeking mutual value. They've come to your brand with an expectation that they're going to gain value, they know that you're going to be gaining value through them as well. And their definition of what their experience is, whether it's good or bad, is simply the equation of their realities or what did they actually get or experience on the, the numerator versus what they were expecting or what was the value proposition that they bought into as the denominator. So keeping it so simple as making sure there's no gap or minimal gap between realities and expectations makes it easier for the rest of your company to row along with you, makes it easier for the C-suite to join hands and to be united. Remember that customers are the ones that fund our salaries and budgets and dividends. And that's why they are the primary uh, performance standard that we need to pay attention to. Then employees create what customers need. So there are secondary expectations set to pay attention to. And then the third one is so vital as well, delivering what customers need. And when I say first, second, and third, I think it's a you know, very, very a small gap between first and second. When you are uh, having great great process outcomes, you can expect that customers will have good outcomes and you can expect that their behavior will translate into good performance or uh, financial outcomes. So the first key in tackling ROI is to know the difference between leading indicators and lagging indicators. Leading indicators are things that you can see before your customers see or know about uh, what's going on. You see it, and then uh, they're going to see it in the, in the near future. Lagging indicators are things that you don't see until your customers see them or know about them. Um, and so this begs the question, has the train left the station already with the metrics that are in popular use today? I'd say yes, because we can't really know about defects until they're out in the field unless we're looking ahead of the curve at things in the workflows that predict that something's going to be faulty, something's going to be uh, untimely, something's going to be lower than the standard. These are things that we see in our workflows that are tied to the process outcomes. So when you have a defect somewhere or issues coming into your contact center or uh, customer comments, uh, suggesting that they're they're unhappy with something, it all ties back to a certain workflow. And that's the thing that we need to be focusing on first and foremost as a leading indicator. It goes hand in hand then with who is paying attention to those workflows and the customer comments associated with them and addressing the root causes of those issues. And this means that we need to be driving internal engagement in customer experience, employee experience, and uh, partner experience improvement. And of course, providing timely insights and intelligence, uh, providing uh, tools on, in an effective way, such as uh, change management, Gantt charts, process improvement, um, empathy mapping, customer mapping, and, and so forth. All of that is the facilitation that is really the responsibility of the customer experience, employee experience, and partner experience leaders so that everyone in your organization can play the team sport of customer, employee, and partner experience excellence. 
what we're trying to do is close the gap between what's expected by our customers, employees, and partners, and what is delivered. And in order to do that, we have to focus on our workflows that are associated with those expectations. And as you do that in a robust way, you'll find that you can actually predict the big picture outcomes. When you get into the micro uh, personas, that's more useful for advertising and sometimes for service and sales and other touch point design, but for helping to shape your whole organization's attitudes and um, actions, you want to make sure that you keep your expectations personas to just two to four overall expectations and then allow uh, sub sub segments or sub personas uh, to be developed by those groups that can use those. So this is introducing a whole new opportunity. So what I do for an expectations persona is I really highlight what is their overall goal? What are they trying to get done? So, you know, I've found that some companies have simplicity and timeliness as major expectations. Other companies have empowerment and um, and trustworthiness as uh, their main expectations or what they're trying to get done. Whatever the, that brand was doing for them is helping them be more empowered in their life or their business, to be more simple or to be more timely in their life or their business. So what are they trying to be by uh, hiring your solution, so to speak? What are their costs? Uh, I find this so enlightening to uh, managers they're usually thinking about how frequently something happens and how much is it costing us, but understanding how much it's costing the customer. And not only in financial terms, but how about uh, embarrassment, their reputation, um, their social and, and uh, time use, uh, their opportunities. What are the costs for them when things go wrong? So you want to give some example customers and some keys to success to summarize that. Then the other part of the persona is the journey of the customer or the employee or the partner uh, that they take for this persona, right? So for this intended outcome, uh, what are the things that they want to see increased? And what are the things they want to see decreased? So these are the journey steps with moments of truth being bolded so they really stand out. And then we have, what are the expectations of your customer, employee, or partner for that moment of truth, for that journey step? And what are the workarounds when things don't go well? So this puts a lot of information on a page. There are probably many ways that you could present it pictorially and uh, very enticing. What I've seen people do is create, uh, say, placemats out of a persona like this and give everyone a placemat or, or something that they can put in their work area because not everyone has an office or walls, but to have something in front of them all the time to remind them of these personas. It's also possible to put these on walls or on your internet in places that people can uh, readily access them. This is an example of an actual expectations persona. This is one that's written up for timeliness sensitive customers. Uh, possibly you could use icons and uh, other images to make it less wordy and easier for people to just glance at and be reminded. I, I think that would be a great idea. And then we have the, the journey uh, inverted here where we have the key steps in bold. You see the moments of truth. And then here we have two columns. What are their expectations for that key step? And what are the workarounds? Uh, what happens when we don't hit the mark. The whole idea is to be in synchronization with what your customers and employees and partners intended outcome is from your brand. And everybody actually has these built in uh, evaluations of whether it's good or not so good. If we could really understand through expectations VOC, expectations VOX, let's say, um, what those built-in evaluations are for selection phase, the getting phase, and the using phase, that would tell us a lot about 
what we need to do to get on the same page. So just keep it simple, realities versus expectations. And the, the whole goal is to close the gap. Ideally, we'll be having a greater than a 1.0 ratio where the realities exceed the expectations through delight, right? Uh, through really exciting the customers so that they will engage the employees and the partners that they, they are real advocates of our brand. But the, the plain truth is that we fall short way too often in even closing the gap to begin with. We've, done, we've uh, not had people on the same page to the extent that's necessary. Ideally, people only have to contact your customer service when they have an address change, a, a new member in the family, uh, or maybe a tornado happened and you know there's some, something that's out of everyone's control that happens where we need service. Well, we're far away from that, but shouldn't we be aiming for that? So right the first time is a big concept in service where we have first contact resolution, but we need to really instill that right the first time mindset across our company and get on the same page with that. Because as we establish these expectations through VOX, expectations re research, that informs how the business is run. It's not good enough to just do surveys that are transactional. How well did you like the agent? Blah, blah, blah. That's not meaningful to the rest of the company. In fact, you know, supervisors and the agents usually can monitor their own performance. You can tell a lot from the tone of voice on uh, service interactions and, and such. We should do, be doing a lot less of that research and taking up our customers' time. We should be doing a lot more expectations research and uh, mining what we're already seeing and hearing from customers. They're, it's almost free VOC, VOE, VOP. Feed that into every group in your company. That's getting on the same page to have almost automatic experience excellence. So whatever you're doing in your day-to-day -day work that influences the company to uh, achieve a greater share of wallet with your customers uh, is a con contribution to return on net assets. Whatever you're doing to save time for customers, to save resources for customers, and to increase the sales velocity, which means shortening the sales cycle, all of that contributes to the top part of the return on net assets ratio. And therefore, you need to be learning how to connect the dots between the work you're doing and, um, and these areas just to speak the language that your executives do, and that will help you to get more credit for the things that you're doing. Customer retention, saving company resources, saving employees time, and redirecting employees from troubleshooting and remedial things to more strategic use of resources, both with employees and other uh, tools that we have on hand. The experience is what you are seeing as your realities versus your expectations. So that is customer experience. The things on the left are tactics toward managing the realities versus expectations. But in and of themselves, those programs are not enough. We need to get everyone on the same page in terms of our executives having a shared vision and being able to walk the talk uh, and all the organizations in our company also being able to row in accordance with that talk so that the walk actually creates those realities that um, match what we're promising to customers and to employees and to partners. Now, when we talk about a team sport, a lot of the things that we do in customer experience management, partner experience, and employee experience management are really not team sports, they're, they're more individual sports. For example, customer care. Usually that's handled by a totally separate group in the company 
and then everyone else in finance, HR, engineering, and so forth goes about their business, and customer service takes care of all of that. We're kind of positioning our roles as separate from all the other operational things that go in the co- go on in the company, and people complain quite a lot about executives not buying in, not being supportive enough, not really being a great executive sponsor. They may, in some cases, uh, really talk the talk, but are they walking the talk? And is it consistent across the entire C team? So here with the skydivers, it's representing your C-suite. All of the people that report into the CEO need to be joined at the hip in their understanding and vision for what customer experience, employee experience, and partner experience should be, how you want these key stakeholders to feel, and making sure that everything in the corporate structure, policies, mission, vision, CapEx, OpEx, uh, policies, processes, incentives, uh, penalties, all those things that the C-suite shapes Are they in sync with how you want your employee experience, customer experience, and partner experience to be for what those particular stakeholders have a vision for their their own growth and their own uh, lives and businesses? We need to make sure that we're in sync with the high potentials and a minimum and and more uh, as we have that uh, capability. And finally, A team sport means that you're actually rowing together, that you're building momentum because you're kind of like the Radio City Rockets or a a rowing team where you're paying attention to the the person there at the the back of the boat. Um, That's called a coxswain. That would be, in this case, your customer experience insights. When you're paying attention to that, as the basis for being on the same page, as the basis for your strategies, for your policies, for your products, for your processes, for your business model. Customer experience insights should be your North Star, as you can see this leader of the the rowing team. And then all the different groups in your company should be rowing to that, uh, making sure that their performance standards are in accordance with what your external customers are expecting as what they're trying to get from your business. What are they trying to get done in their life? What are they trying to get done in their business? So we talked about expectations, personas, because that would be the guidance for every group in your company to participate in CX, EX, and PX being excellent and being the growth driver that it can be both at revenue and cost reduction profitability. Send me your suggestions or let's set up a quick conversation. Sign up at clearaction.com slash masterminds and encourage your colleagues to join us. Let's keep in touch.